Good morning. Welcome to my laboratory. Uh, this is a sort of a quick and dirty uh, replication, quasi replication of Tin Man's uh, pulse motor measurement anomaly. I decided to do it without a pulse motor. Um, I basically simulated the pulse motor circuit by just using a MOSFET to switch uh, the power through the bulb, through an inductor and a uh, an inductor and a resistor in combination. Uh, let's see, this is a 5.2 something millihenry inductor. This is an 18 ohm resistor and this is a 3.3 ohm resistor. So I have that inductor resistor combination in series with the uh, light bulb. So the current path is like this. The 12 volts from the battery here, positive 12 volts from the battery, comes in, goes through the 1 ohm current viewing resistor, through the light bulb, through the inductor resistor combination to the drain of the MOSFET, uh, and then the source of the MOSFET goes to ground. The gate of the MOSFET is being uh, turned on pulsed by the uh, F43, where is it, it's up there somewhere, the F43 function generator, uh, which has a, an isolated ground, so there's no uh, connection between the function generator ground and the rest of the grounds on the scope, except where they're connected together, so, uh, and the, uh, both of the probe references are at the connection between the CVR and the bulb, and the channel 2 probe is at the input end of the CVR, so it's reading the current through the CVR, and then the channel 1 probe is looking at the voltage drop across the bulb, uh, just as Tin Man circuit is uh, represented. And then here I have uh, a uh, capacitor stack. I didn't have a 6800 microfarad capacitor, so I put three 2200 microfarad caps in parallel to give 6600 microfarads. And then there's uh, the clip lead that connects, that can connect that to, um, let's see, this clip lead here goes over to the junction between the bulb and the inductor resistor combination. The channel 1 probe point, and then the other one goes to the source, MOSFET source, or uh, negative battery right there. So uh, I've basically just used uh, a MOSFET to simulate the rotor triggering circuit of the Bedini motor, and uh, so it's kind of a no Bedini, no Bedini at all uh, circuit. And then I have the scope traces up on the uh, Rigol scope as before. So there's the scope traces uh, with the capacitors disconnected, and there's the trace with the capacitors connected, disconnected, and there's the bulb. Capacitors disconnected, capacitors connected, capacitors disconnected, capacitors connected. It's a little hard to see, but with the 22.3 ohms resistance, the bulb does get dimmer when the capacitors are connected. If I turn out the overhead light and then do it, capacitors disconnected, I mean capacitors connected there, capacitors disconnected now, capacitors connected disconnected. So you can definitely see that the bulb gets dimmer when the capacitor is connected, disconnected. Okay. Even though the scope shows the current and voltage too uh, increase uh, quite a bit when the capacitor is connected. So you would expect the bulb to be brighter then. Okay, so now I'm going to go over here to the resistors and there I have uh, 18 and 3.3, so that's 20, 
18, 19, 20, 21, 21 point three in series. So let's move to here. So that's just 18 in series now. And then uh, look at the bulb. Turn off the overhead light. So capacitors are disconnected now. Connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected. So you can see there's very, very little change uh, right at 18 ohms. So now if I go over here and bypass the resistors completely, like that, now the bulb is a little bit brighter. Capacitors disconnected, capacitors connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected. So it depends on that total resistance of the inductor resistor combination. Disconnected, connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected, connected. Go back to 18, like that. Disconnected, connected, disconnected. You saw that little surge there. That's because the capacitors were uh, were not charged up yet. Disconnected, connected, disconnected connected. So you can see there's almost no change, in fact no visible change between connecting and disconnecting with that 18 ohms in there. So now let's go back to the full 18, 19, 20, 21, uh, 21.3 ohms there. And now we have disconnected, connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected, connected. You can see that the bulb gets a little bit dimmer when the capacitor is connected. And if I turn off the overhead light, disconnected, connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected. So you can see clearly that there's a relationship between the coil inductor resistance and the behavior of the circuit when that capacitor is connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected. All right, thank you for watching.